Hello everybody, welcome to the Cinepax YouTube channel. So today we're going to be going over how to use the Scribble Effects Pack in DaVinci Resolve and kind of going over some tips and just some basic uses for it and overall just kind of push your editing to the next level. So anyway, let's jump right into it. Alright, so the Scribble Effects Pack comes in a group of three different zip folders. So what you're going to do is obviously download them double click to unzip them if need so you may need to use a program like a 7-zip which is free um, but in most cases you can just double click extract it and what you want to do is just take all the files from within the zip folder and drag it over to another folder which I have already done so now we can go ahead and import them into DaVinci Okay, now because I'm importing a file structure rather than just individual files into DaVinci, I'm going to go over to the Media tab, and instead of pressing Control i I'm just going to go over to our Media Storage here, and I'm going to find the folder this way in the Media Surfer right here, and once I find it, which I believe it's down here, Scribble Effects Pack, I'm going to right click on this and add folder and subfolders to media, create bins. Click on that one and that will automatically import all of your files in here, but it will keep the folder system in your media pool, which is super helpful. So all the files in this pack are 4K Apple ProRes with transparency, so you don't have to worry about your alpha channel. You just drag and drop and it works. So. What's included in this pack is your scribble frames, which these are essentially frames and borders that you can put around various things, which are super cool. Uh, kind of works with any scene. Uh, you also have split screen, which just kind of animates like a split screen uh, effect that you can just kind of stylize yourself. Then you have scribble shapes, which as the name implied, is just shapes. So we have things like hearts, uh, circles, um, we gotta show it a little bit here. Uh, squares as well, so you can do a variety of cool things as well as arrows and plenty more. Then we have our accents, which these are more movement based, so we have things like explosions, kind of like trails that kind of move around, so you can have them trace various things. A pulse. Um, and then finally, what I like the best is the wrap accents, which will wrap around an object. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, let's look at the scribble letters here, which you have your heavy letters, which let's look at the number three here. As you can see, the heavy one, we have multiple like strokes, it's really heavy, messy, and thick. And then you have our light version, which is just one stroke. So as you can see, it's a lot more thinner, simple, and light. Um, then let's look at the scribble objects here. So these are all objects compared to shapes. So you have cool things like the Grim Reaper um, and what we got a smiley face as well. Um, demon wings. We got a lot of cool different things in here that you can mess with. Um, and then finally to wrap things up, we have our transitions, which are obviously transitions. So let's go ahead and throw this on some footage and see what we can make. All right, so I have some footage of a good old fashioned bank robbery right here. So why don't we go ahead and try to spice it up with some of these effects here. So first thing I wanna do, I wanna use a wrap accent on this baseball bat because it looks pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna grab this wrap accent three here, which is personally my favorite. And when you first drag it in, you can click on your transform tool right here to be able to rescale it. If you're working on something that is smaller than 4K, you can go over to your inspector and click on the zoom here to adjust the size of it. And then once it's in a workable size, go ahead and just use a transform pool to kind of move it around and let's try to get it into place. I'm gonna wrap it around this baseball bat right here. Now I'm not too happy with the timing here, so why don't we try to speed this up a little bit. So I'm gonna go over here to, let's see, change clip speed. However, uh, let's see, what do I wanna put it to? Um, I think I'm gonna speed it up to like 130% and see where that takes me. So if we go swing it out there, let's see, what does that look like? Eh, well, the whole thing is in slow motion. So you know what, I think that'll work for me. All right, so why don't we try to line this up now? So I'm going to let this swing out and we'll have it go right around there. We want it to line up the bat. I think this could shrink just a little bit. Yeah, right around there. All right, cool, that looks pretty nice. All right, so go over to your transform now and Hit, click the keyframe here and I'm just gonna track this manually so I'm gonna go like three frames at a time just drag it over and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spin right there and then three more frames drag it over give it a little bit of a spin line it up the best that I can 
one, two, three, and looks like we've kind of finished. So let's actually go back one, rotate it just a tad more and put it right there. All right, perfect. And then let's go click back to our last keyframe and track it the other way as well. One, two, three, drag this over. All right, let's go ahead and play that through. Oops, missed one frame and drag this over right there. All right, let's see what happens. Hey, perfect, looks perfect. All right, that didn't take too long at all. All right, so let's give that a little bit of a spin. And that's how you can kind of basic do your basic moving and transforms and all of that. But let's say we also want to add some cool, let's see, like money symbols right here. Here we go, some cash. Um, so let's drag that in. I'll drag this down so we have a little bit more room, stretch everything out a little bit, bring this to a new layer. And let's go ahead and put a few symbols here and there. So I'm gonna just drag one right here and let's go ahead and I'll go over to our layers and hold down alt to duplicate this layer and drag another one over here. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna just shrink it here and let's put it, let's let you know I changed my mind. Let's move it over here. Kind of looks nicer over here. Give it a little bit of rotation and hit this and go like that. All right, perfect. And then why don't we do one, one more, which will be like right here. Perfect, that's looking kind of fun. All right, awesome. So now the cool thing here is what if I want to loop this though? Uh, let's have it kind of show up in the beginning here. Um, I want them to maybe be a little bit offset. So like pop, uh, let's see, let me zoom in. Make it, make it pop in pretty fast here. So let's just go like right there. Pop, pop, pop. All right, perfect. So they just kind of like pop in randomly. Um, let's move the whole thing over just a tad and play that through. All right, cool, kind of pops in, looks fun. Um, but let's say, as you can see, it's not going all the way to the end. Now the nice thing about these, these are just scribbles, all right? They just kind of loop. So these are all completely expandable and loopable. So I can just go ahead and click Alt and just duplicate each of these tracks to extend them. And then let's go ahead and let me shrink this down that's bothering me and let's go ahead and just clip it all right to where we want it to stop and just like that it expands and loops perfectly all right so awesome now let's go ahead and say for example you want to change the color of it now the best way i like to do that is i go over to our color page here so I'm gonna select, uh, which one do I want? Um, I think I want, I wanna change the center one here. Let's change it to green because obviously it's cash, right? Now there's a hundred different ways to change the color here. This is after all a color grading program. But for me, what I like to do the best is go over to the color warper right here. Mostly because if I select the center dot right here, it gives me access to both the hue, saturation, and the luminance, which sometimes you can't always get access to if you're just like offsetting it over here in your color wheels and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this perfectly into a little bit of our green channel. So as you can see, we warped the color over to green. So we're kind of getting a little bit nice, nice. So we're getting a little bit of a nice tone there. Um, I like give it a little more saturation, but I think I want to bring down the luminance, give it a little bit of a darker color right there. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. That's a kind of deep, rich green right there. That's what I'm liking. All right, maybe bring down the saturation just a little bit, uh, right around there, and slide this around, right around there. That looks cool. All right, so now we've got some awesome green colors as well. Something I do want to mention real quick, if you bring in an arrow, and let's say we just kind of put one right here, and then also raise this up and make a second one, now to flip it, uh, Da Vinci is a little bit weird. When you flip it, it keeps it the exact same way. So the best way to actually flip or mirror one of these is to go into the transform panel and click the flip tool right here. So as you can see, you can kind of flip the buttons right there and that'll give you a little bit more access to what you're messing with. All right, let's create a little transition here. But before we do that, this has become a mess. So let's go ahead and just create a compound clip here. Uh, new compound clip. Uh, what should we call this? Um, let's see. 
FX, FX one. We'll keep it generic, all right? And that will hopefully clear everything up so we don't have so many layers and uh, space being taken up. Um, so let's go over here and let's just drag in one of our transitions here. Um, scribble transitions. And which one do I like the best? Let's see. Cross hatch wipe, diamond transition. Um, let's just do a cross hatch. That looks pretty cool. So if we line this up right, we want it to cover the entire frame. So right around there. So if we play this, all right, perfect. Look at that. All right, now one thing I wanna do is I wanna track some cross eyes onto these guys as well as a skull. Now, since we are working in DaVinci and we don't need to go to some external program and form some dynamic link to do some special effects here, why don't we go ahead and jump on into Fusion by selecting this clip and let's do some advanced tracking. Now this is some pretty advanced um, little uh, runner longs here, so I suggest you have at least a basic understanding of fusion before doing something like this. But let's go ahead and just do a basic track here. Now to do that, click on our media here and press shift and spacebar at the same time to bring up our search bar here. And what we want is a planar tracker right there, which I already typed in. So let's just click on that and add it. Now with this, what's super cool is let's find our starting frame. I wanna start tracking right there, and I'm gonna draw a box around this man's face. Now, Da Vinci's tracking system is, mwah, it is, it is beautiful. I would marry it if I could. It is so great, because I can just press this button and have a failure here. Um, let me remind you, you have to set your reference frame right here. So whatever frame you're on and you have it set as a reference, click set so we are on frame 53 to start tracking and then the second thing that we want to do I only want to uh, track the translation right now so if you want to track rotation or perspective or anything you can go ahead and add that actually let's go ahead and track rotation as well but that's it I just want to track translation and rotation nothing else so let's go ahead and press this button this goes one frame at a time this one just goes through the whole sequence so let's go ahead and play it and it is tracking very smoothly, which is wonderful. So let's go ahead and stop it right there because we don't need anything further than that and click create planar transform. Now this is our transform information. This is essentially the, the movement, right? So how this works now is we can go ahead and delete this. And what we're gonna do is go over to your media pool, which is right here and grab eyes here. Now this, is what I want to overlay on top of our footage here. So I know our tracker starts at frame 53. Remember, that's where our tracking information starts. So that's where I want the eyes to show up and start. So click on your media in two, which is our eyes here. Let's see why don't we go ahead and rename this, which is right around, where is it? Rename right there. And let's name this eyes. Let's go ahead and make sure it starts on frame 53. So right there, 55, that's close enough. <laughs> All right, so drag that over. And what it's gonna do, we're gonna go from our eyes, which is the media, it's gonna go over to a transform node, which let's go ahead and spacebar and shift at the same time and transform. Okay, and with our transform node, it's gonna then go into our tracker node, and then let's take the end of this and merge them together. All right, so how this works is this is our tracking information right here. All right, before it goes into our tracking information, it goes into our transform node, and the reason it goes into our transform node is because we want to basically do a transform. We wanna make sure it's scaled and fits onto this guy's face. So that's what this first transform node is doing. It is what we're doing right now, is I, I am rescaling it, I am sizing it, and fitting it to his face. All right, then once it is scaled and fit to his face, then it goes into our tracking information, and it will then move and transform our eyes so it actually tracks to the man's face. And then of course, we merge it with the 
uh, original footage. And that is how this all comes together. So if we go ahead and press play, as you can see, the eyes are perfectly tracked onto his face and I love it. All right guys, so I added a few more cool transitions and also just um, tracked in the skull as well and added a few awesome letters because these guys are pretty suspicious, don't really know what they're up to. One thing that I did wanna show you before we wrap everything up is I wanted to go ahead and put a few effects on these. Now, these are all normal compositions so you can really kinda change and push kind of the dynamics that you can get from these if you add some effects or color grading or anything that you can imagine there is no right or wrong to this but like let's say for example you go over to our effects library right over here and just add in like a drop shadow drop shadow and you can go ahead and add a shadow to one of these check marks go over to our effects and just kind of increase the shadow strength the angle of it you can see we're moving it around the distance lower the distance there and decrease or increase the blur actually it might even look really cool almost just a solid black line it looks pretty cool like that if you look at that as well or you can even take something like abstraction drag it onto there and greatly change up the style and feel of the animation so go ahead and push the limits and see what you guys can come up with and there's plenty there's endless amount of things that you can do when just customizing and smashing and putting all these things together. So anyways guys, as always, happy editing and go make some epic stuff.